Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to Geometry. We're continuing to work with the topic of transformations. So far we've seen ways to move from an object with a description to the image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to identify the transformation performed when we're given an object and its image. In this diagram we have our object, which is the red triangle in quadrant 2 along with four transformations which we need to identify and describe. In evaluating the description of a transformation, it's helpful to keep all four possibilities in mind that we're looking at in the context of IGCSE. Translation, reflection, enlargement, and rotation. Let's begin with A and let's think about what we can eliminate in considering the options for A in description. A relative to the red triangle hasn't changed size so it's not an enlargement it's not rotating in any way it's not a rotation and it's not a mirror image everything is in the same orientation so it's not a reflection all that leaves us with is a translation so we'll identify a as translation Now once I know I'm working with a translation, I know that there are only two components to my description. So I'll eliminate that third component. All I need to identify now is the translation unit vector. And I can identify the unit vector by evaluating one point in the object relative to the corresponding point in the image. So looking at the bottom left vertex, the bottom left vertex is a move from object to image, a move left of 3 and a move up of 4. So the translation vector is negative 3, 4. And that is the complete description of the transformation in image A. Now let's move to image B. Looking at image B, we can see we don't have a translation because the orientation isn't exactly the same as the object. We don't have an enlargement because the lengths are the same as the object. And we don't have a rotation. The transformation in B isn't a result of turning the object. What we have here is a reflection. So we identify that this is a reflection and then find the mirror line of reflection. Like translation, a reflection has only two points of description, so I'm going to eliminate the third component. I can see that the reflection is directly to the right of the object, so we must have a vertical mirror line and we'll identify that by calculating the distance from corresponding points of the object in image. The lower right hand vertex of the object corresponds to the lower left hand vertex of the image. Calculating the distance between those two from negative 4 to 6 is a distance of 10. So we divide that by 2. 5 is the location of the mirror line. So from the object moving 5 right, we move from x equals negative 4 to x equals 1 and our mirror line is x equals 1. And here I've drawn in the mirror line of x equals 1 and you can confirm that any point on the object and its corresponding point on the image are equidistant from one another. In other words, the mirror line is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment connecting a point from the object to its corresponding point in the image. Now let's move on to transformation C. We can observe a clear change in the dimensions of the image triangle in C. So whether larger or smaller, this is an enlargement. In this case, larger. Now let's identify the scale factor. Let's compare two corresponding sides of the triangles. First, the object, the base, has a length of 2. And looking at the image, we have a base of 6. So the scale factor is 6 divided by 2, or 3. And now we want to identify the center of enlargement. 
The center is the intersection point of all lines connecting corresponding points on the object and the image. And I'll start by drawing a line to connect the top vertices of both triangles. And now I'll do the same with the bottom right vertices of both triangles. And now I can identify the center as negative 5, 9. If we connect the remaining vertices of both triangles with a straight line, that line will also go through the center. But with two connections, you can identify the center. So in this case, we've identified the center as negative 5, 9. Now let's move on to D. D represents a turn of the object. So we're dealing in this case with a rotation. And we want to identify the degrees of rotation as well as the center of rotation. With rotations, we're expecting either a quarter turn or a half turn. We can observe here that this is a quarter turn, in other words, 90 degrees. And now we need to determine whether it's a clockwise or a counterclockwise turn. Looking at the object, if we note the top vertex, that is the smallest angle in the triangle, that's now in the position of the far right vertex, of the image triangle. So we're turning to the right. This is a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. And finally we need to identify the center of rotation. So to begin I'm going to pick two corresponding vertices from object to image connecting them with a straight line. And now I want to find the perpendicular bisector of this line. So I can observe that the slope of this line is positive 1. Therefore, the perpendicular bisector will have a slope of negative 1. You can identify the midpoint of the segment either with a ruler or in this case visually. I can see that the line segment is cutting diagonally across three squares. So I can place the midpoint halfway along the diagonal through the middle of those three squares. And drawing a line through that point with a slope of negative 1 will have our perpendicular bisector. So the maroon line is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment connecting the corresponding points of the object and image triangles. Now let's do the same with two more corresponding vertices. And again we'll identify and draw in the perpendicular bisector of this line segment. And what we're looking for is the meeting point of these two perpendicular bisectors. That is the center of rotation. So in this new line segment, we're going from the point negative 6, 6 to the point 2, 8. That segment has a slope of 1 over 4. In our perpendicular bisector, we'll want a slope of negative 4. And in finding the center, I want to go half the distance from point to point. From point to point is a move of 8 right and 2 up. Half of that distance is a move of 4 right and 1 up, which will be the point negative 2, 7. That's the midpoint of our line segment, the perpendicular bisector should have a slope of negative 4. Now we have our second perpendicular bisector drawn in and the two perpendicular bisectors intersect at the point negative 1, 3 which is the center of rotation. So now we've seen how to identify and describe the transformation given an object and its image understanding translation, reflection, enlargement, and rotation. So this concludes our series on transformations. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.